Hello, and welcome to another edition of Property Line Today. My name's Curtis Mangus, and I'm your host for today's show. And on today's show, we're going to talk about the different insurances that are required for homeowners, one of which is homeowner's insurance, and the other of which is title insurance. Uh, the first half of today's show is going to be on homeowner's insurance, and our guest today is Monty Leanham from uh, American Family Insurance. Monty, welcome. Hey, thanks, Curtis. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thank you. And we're going to talk about the different uh, aspects of homeowner's insurance and when somebody's buying a home, the different things that they need to know when they're looking for homeowner's insurance and the coverages. And first of all, Monty, if you would just kind of explain the process when somebody calls you looking for homeowner's insurance, what you need to know, ask them what they need to know. Okay. Well, there's a lot of factors that go into homeowner's insurance. There's many factors, in, in fact. Um, the biggest thing is the age of the house, square footage of the house, actually the age of the customer, what type of roof they have, if they live in the city limits, uh, two or three car garage, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, things like that. So you have kind of a checklist that you go through. Uh, do you need a copy of the appraisal? Um, some cases we do. Uh, if it's a brand new house and it's nothing's online and we have nothing to look at for the county or, or Zillow or anything like that, we would need a copy of the appraisal to get the details of it, but most of the cases we don't. If it's a home that isn't new construction, you can usually research it and find out what yeah. that is. Yeah, between the internet and the county records, we can pretty much find anything on that house. All right, so when somebody's shopping for coverages, what is the normal standard homeowner's insurance coverages that people typically are required to have? Um, well, usually the required by the lender is usually the, the balance of the loan. But a customer usually wants to have replacement costs in the whole house. So it just depends on, you know, price per square footage of the house. Would all. you explain that, uh, what replacement cost is? You bet, yeah. Um, replacement cost, actual cash value is replacement cost minus depreciation. So replacement cost just guarantees, you know, if your house completely burned down, even if it's 20 years old, we'd build you a brand new house. So replacement cost is based off those factors. And also the contents. Correct. The so, contents, yes, replacement uh, cost. So if the house burned to the ground and they've got a television set in the house, they get a new TV. That is correct, if they replace it. So right. just, just real quick, um, if they have like a 60-inch big screen TV and it gets stolen and the customers, we would pay them what it would cost to buy that big screen TV now, not what it would cost at a garage sale. Right. But they would give them a check up front for the actual cash value and they could take that money, and if they don't replace the TV, they can keep the money. But if they replace the TV, they'll get an additional check to match up to the replacement cost of that TV. All right. Do most people do replacement cost? Oh, yes. Yes, I, you would want to do that. Virtually everybody does replacement cost these days. Is yes, that correct? that is correct. All right. And so explain when people are shopping for homeowner's insurance. You mentioned things like the roof. Okay. Uh, what about credit? Well, there's, there's some factors, yes. Uh, obviously, credit is one of the many factors that goes into um, determining a homeowner's premium. And they have some data that backs up that people with lower, not necessarily credit bureau scores, but maybe some things on their credit like judgments, bankruptcies, collections, they have a tendency to either have higher claim frequency or maybe some claim fraud. So they have some data that backs that up. So. But it is a minute thing on the premium itself, but it is one of the factors that goes involved. It, it goes into consideration, and so there's not one overriding factor that, no. that determines a homeowner's insurance premium. No. There, you said there was like 70 things? 70 different things, and you know, a lot of it's like a secret special sauce that I don't even get to, I just hit the number, hit calculate, and it spits it out, and sometimes I know what's going on, but sometimes I don't. But it's a computer program that estimates and figures all of those numbers. Correct, it's a sophisticated, uh, rating factor. All right, but when it comes to credit, uh, I have read that uh, people with better credit and better credit scores have fewer claims, so consequently they have lower premiums. Correct. That, that is right. true. It all does. right. And like I said, it doesn't mention the premium, but if all things considered, same house, same everything else, same age of the customer, and somebody does have a little bit better credit, yeah, that premium will be a teeny bit lower than somebody with a little bit worse credit. Interesting, interesting. What else typically goes into uh, figuring that quote? You mentioned a roof. Correct. I versus an asphalt versus a cedar shingle roof. It doesn't necessarily actually affect the premium as far as what type of roof you have. Um, if you have a wood shake roof, they usually put a replacement cost, I'm sorry, an actual cash value on the roof versus if you had a three tab or agri agricultural, uh, agricultural shingles. Um, wood shake roofs, if we have hail damage, 
they seem to, if you, they hit it just right, it cracks them and does more damage than it would on a regular roof. So they do take that into consideration. They don't necessarily raise your premium, but you won't have full replacement costs on the roof. And that's not all insurance carriers, but that's pretty common through the industry. All right, so if your roof is older, uh, it may not have the same replacement cost as a newer roof. That is correct. So one of the things, obviously, if it's a newer roof and you have damaged wind, like your roof blows off or lightning or hail, we had a couple of hail storms here last year, had a lot of claims come through Meridian Eagle area. Um, a lot of people got their roofs replaced, but if your roof's 20 years old and a hail storm comes through, they don't cover just because of the age of the roof. So oldness is not a covered peril on a homeowner's policy. Okay, but age of the house has a, an impact on the premium? That is correct. You usually get a, like if you're buying a brand new house, let's say a 1500 square foot house, and it's brand new, you're gonna get like a 35% discount because the insurance company knows that, you know, your hot water tank's not gonna blow up, your air conditioner's not gonna go out, you know, you're not gonna have leaks with the refrigerator, things like that. So you're gonna get a 35% discount for a brand new house versus a 1975 house, let's okay. say. Just because there's an increased chance of having claims Correct. with an older house the, just because of age and yeah. condition. And again, they have data that proves that stuff on that, so. All right, um, previous claims, how, how does that factor in with people if, if they're, they've had a home before, how, how is that looked at? Claims is another factor that goes into that. Um, usually most insurance companies go back about three years on claims. And the claims follows the person. So if you were living in the state of Washington and moved here and bought a house, as an insurance company, we have able to pull a record that will show that claim you had back there. And if it was your primary residence, that could affect a premium on your policy, on your home you're buying down here, even if it's a brand new house. So there's a database out there that all insurance companies report into Correct. for claims. Correct. And they have essentially a three-year look back. That is correct. And if you've had previous claims, under a worst case, you could be denied. Correct. Or at least you're going to pay a higher premium. Correct. There's a couple factors. One, they look at claim frequency. How often are the claims? They look at the dollar amount of the claim. And they also look to see if it's like a mother nature related claim. So if you have like a lightning, hail, windstorm type of claim, they don't necessarily account that against you. So it's not, not, not your fault. But I mean, some other claims are not your fault too. But this one, you had no control over. Okay, and so what are the most common homeowner's insurance claims that typically over time that uh, you encounter? Well, in the state of Idaho, we're actually one of the, few, the, we have the lowest average premium in the industry for homeowner's premiums. Where if you take the same house here, again, it's about 30 to $40 a month. So you're looking at 400 to $500 average premium. If you went to, let's say Colorado or Missouri or even Arizona, you're probably looking at three to four times that, just because we just don't have many natural disasters here they do. No tornadoes, no hailstorms, things like fires. We do have a little bit of fires, but not as much as other states. Um, so our probably our biggest claim is roofs. Um, you know, they get old, the wind comes in, the rain comes in, leaks on it. That's probably our biggest claim. So most insurance companies are a little picky on the roofs. So they're sensitive on the roofs, especially in Idaho. Correct. But it makes a big difference apparently in what state you live in as to what kind of yes. premiums you're gonna pay? That is correct. So okay. it's, it's, I didn't realize that Idaho was so cheap. Yeah, we're probably the 48th, 49th average lowest premium in the industry um, for all the states. In but states that have like a lot of hurricanes. Correct. Or that kind of thing, they're much higher? Correct, like California premiums are higher, Arizona, all the East Coast, South with the hurricanes, things like that, you get a lot more storms. The Tornado Alley, their premiums are way higher than ours. So what's an average in Tornado Alley, do you know? I, I do not know, uh, but I know it is. About on the coast, you said they're several times higher? Correct, oh at least three or four times higher. So that $400 a year claim, or I'm sorry, policy premium. here, premium here, which is like $33 a month, could easily be $100 a month in Tornado Alley or in Florida or someplace that's hurricane prone. That is so, correct. So, so one of the nice things about living in Idaho is at least your homeowner's insurance that is, is right. cheaper. All right, so, so what other things uh, affect claims like uh, dogs? Dogs, dogs is a... Uh, you know, it's not necessarily a high frequency claim, but with dogs, if there is a dog bite with a, a child, it's, it's one that pays out a lot. It's, it's, so you don't have as many, but when you do, they're usually not good. I mean, if somebody bites a dog, you're having 
um, plastic surgery type things so they can get kind of bad. So a lot of companies restrict what type of dogs you can have. Can um, they deny you for having a Rottweiler or a Pitbull? They pit can. Bull? American Family doesn't. Um, they do limit some of the coverages if you do have a vicious dog. So you, they lower your liability for that portion of it. But there are insurance companies out there that if you have certain dogs like a Pitbull, a Chow, a Rottweiler, things like that, they might not even be able to write your homeowner's premium. Okay, so that you could possibly just be denied right. for that, especially if you'd had a previous claim. Correct. Uh, and it not just limits to dogs, it limits to pets. I mean, some people could have a 20-foot a boa constrictor. Some insurance companies might not like that. Or some people might have a bobcat for a pet. They won't like that, or a wolf hybrid, or something like that. So it's not just limited to dogs. It could be some type of reptiles, um, um, tigers, lions, things like what that. What about horses? Horses, well, there's no limit on horses. Um, usually on a homeowner's premium, there is an endorsement they add just because of increased liability for a horse, just because like your kids might ride it, things like that. Um, they don't like it if you're breeding or boarding horses just because of liability issues. But if they're for your pleasure use, for your kids' 4-H programs, things like that, that doesn't, I mean, it does affect the premium a little bit, but not much. They can't deny you because of horses. Okay. So pets are considered, depending on the type of pet that you have. Correct. And that's part of the checklist that you go through. That is correct. All right. So how about um, outbuildings? Outbuildings. That's, that's kind of a big one, too. Usually, in, especially on older homes, you know, the, the old homes that had the alleys with the detached garage and the alley. A lot of times people uh, upkeep the siding and the roof on their house, but don't touch the outbuilding. So on a homeowner's premium, your outbuilding's the same coverage as your primary resident, replacement cost. So the insurance companies want to see that outbuilding is in the same condition as your house. So you want to try to keep the upkeep of the roof, um, the siding, things like that. And, and you know, if you have a roof that's caving in or concaved, there's some liability issues too if somebody's inside and something happens to it. So they do look at outbuildings on that. Okay, so you need to take good care of all the structures on the property, Correct. not just the primary dwelling, Correct. but also uh, garages, shops, storage sheds, anything like that. All of those need to be kept in good condition Correct. or else it could affect your premiums as well. Yeah, and the big thing, important thing with outbuildings too is like, let's just say you have a house and you're insured for $200,000. Your policy automatically has 10% coverage for any outbuildings. So in that case scenario, $20,000 would go towards an outbuilding. So you really want to make sure on your insurance policy, if that shop's like a 58 by 40 shop, you only have $20,000 coverage, you're going to want an endorsement to increase that coverage on that shop or the garage. So you, if you have a large outbuilding with a lot of value, yes. you're going to want to address that as part of the insurance to make sure that if something happens or it burns down, that there's sufficient coverage right. to replace it. And one of the things I do is I, I personally have to go out and inspect the houses and when I, you know, make sure the roof looks good, there's no holes in the siding, things like that. And one of the things I do look at is the outbuilding and the reason I do that is just to make sure the customer is covered. I'm like, say, you know, you only have 20,000, might not be a bad idea to increase that coverage on that. Because if it's, like right. you said, a large shop worth a lot of money, you want to make sure that there's enough coverage to be able right. to replace it. And, you know, the other thing is on your homeowner's policy that whatever your dwelling coverage, you have 10% for outbuildings. Usually most homeowners policies, so if you have a $200,000 house, you usually have 75% additional coverage for your personal property. So in that case scenario, it'd be $150,000 in coverage for personal property. And your personal property does go cover anything inside the house and also in your shop. So it would automatically extend to that. So you don't need to necessarily increase the coverage for the stuff you have in the shop, but you just might want to increase the coverage for the shop itself. All right. And so what kind of personal property needs to be addressed that might need some extra coverage as a, an example, large jewelry collection or, or perhaps a large gun collection. How is that handled with the insurance company? Um, usually there's some limits on, on your policy for certain personal property. My three biggest things, especially being in the state of Idaho, are tools, guns, and jewelry. And there's some limitations. Most policies cover up to twenty-five dollars to $5,000 on either one of those categories. So if you have a large number of tools that are for personal use, it might not be a bad idea to get a writer, um, an endorsement to put on your policy to increase those. Now when you have an outbuilding, um, some people might have a business they run out of that, and your homeowner's policy does limit coverages for business. So depending on how much business you do at your house, you might want to get a separate policy for business. Back to outbuildings too, um, I always tell people if you have a car parked in your garage, 
you have a jet ski parked in your garage, motorcycle, boat, whatever, and your house burns down or your garage burns down, your homeowner's policy doesn't cover that. So you wanna make sure you have separate insurance for those type right. of policies. So in that case, if you had a boat stored in your garage, you'd wanna make sure that either your boat had sufficient coverage, or could you cover that with an additional rider? No, there's again, there's a maximum coverage on your homeowner's policy. Depending on the value of the boat, it's, it's usually around $1,500 you probably want to get different coverage for that. Okay, so you, Now, you, sometimes people have like an ATV that they use for the maintenance of their house. They might be on 10 acres and they have a four-wheeler that they use to plow the driveway. That could be considered personal property because you use it to maintain the house. But other than that, you, the riding lawnmower obviously is covered, but anything else you probably want to get separate insurance You want for. separate insurance, but you, and they couldn't get that insurance through you that was covered through homeowner's insurance. Correct. Right? That is correct. So, so let's talk about uh, deductibles. Okay. Uh, explain the different deductibles and, and how those work. Well, obviously, deductibles, um, how it works is whenever you have a claim, you're responsible for the first portion of the deductible. So it being a $500 deductible, a $1,000 deductible, I've had people up to $10,000 deductibles, depending on the house, you're responsible for the first portion of that and the insurance covers it after that. So I like to tell clients or insureds that you don't want to use your homeowner's policy as a maintenance policy. You kind of want to use it as a catastrophe type policy. Um, a lot of times, obviously, the higher the deductible, the lower the premium, but on the mortgage side of it, they usually require a certain deductible, like usually a thousand or right. maybe even 10% of whatever the dwelling coverage is. So, you know, depending on your mortgage company is they might dictate, dictate the highest deductible you can go on that. Right, so the way to, to recap that, how a deductible works is if you have a thousand dollar deductible but you have a $5,000 loss, then you are gonna pay the first $1,000 of that loss, and then the insurance company will pay the following $4,000, correct? That is correct. Uh, but because you have a $1,000 deductible, your homeowner's insurance premium will be less than if you had 500. That is correct. All right, and, and so it's just a question of what your preference is for the deductible. Right. All right, and the standard is typically a thousand. That's pretty industry standard as a thousand dollar deductible. All right, and mortgage companies feel the most comfortable with a thousand dollar deductible, and the, the reason they want less deductibles obviously is because if something did happen to your house and burned down, they want to make sure you're able to re, you know rebuild it and afford, you forge your parts into rebuilding that house. Okay. So they want to make sure that it's all taken care of. All right. So let's talk about liability coverage. Okay. How, how does that work? You know, what's your definition of liability coverage and how, how does that work okay. from a homeowner's insurance perspective? We have, there, it's funny because people a lot of times think that when they get homeowner's insurance, they're only getting coverage to cover the house itself. And when I explain to them the liability coverage, they're like, wow, I didn't even realize that covered it. And it's actually a pretty cheap portion of the premium on your homeowner's policy is the liability coverage. So basically liability covers a couple different things. One. Um, you have to be liable for something. So that's the biggest thing. At fault. At fault. And number two, you can't be liable to yourself. So you can't file a liability claim against yourself or anybody in your household. Liability covers things like if you don't shovel your driveway and it's icy out, someone comes walking up on your sidewalk or driveway, slips and falls, hits their head, we'll cover the liability um, for that. Um, if for some reason like you have water on your floor inside the house, somebody trips and slips on that, hits their head on a countertop, that's liability, we'll cover that. Um, goes back to pets. Active pets is a liability. So if your dog, even if you're on the Oregon coast and your dog runs over and bites somebody, not, it doesn't have to be at your house, just because you're on the Oregon coast, your liability insurance will cover that. So it does, and also covers sporting activities. Okay, so my best example for liability, and a lot of people don't know this, is like, um, you're out golfing, and you slice a ball, and it goes and takes out another person, hits them in the head, and they have to go leave by ambulance. Your homeowner's liability will cover that even if you're on a golf course. So if your kids are playing t-ball, let's say, at the park, and your kid swings at the ball, and accidentally lets go of the bat, bat goes flying, hits another kid in the teeth, knocks out that other kid's teeth, just your homeowner's liability will cover that, even if you're not even at your house. All right, I don't think a lot of people realize that that liability right. coverage covers them away from the property. Right, it's personal liability. All right, but, and that's true personal liability anywhere. Well, obviously, if you're in your car, then your car liability would cover that. Sure. So you personally did something, you know, obviously not in a motorized vehicle. Right. Yeah. Typically, the, the, the two insurances most people have is their home 
and their car. Right, that correct? is correct. And so if you've got homeowner's insurance and you have liability and you're not in a car, then at least you know you have coverage if something happens and you, you're considered to be liable uh, under those. What is the normal coverage amount for liability that the standard policy has? You know, and the mortgage industry doesn't uh, regulate that. They they don't care about that side, but usually somewhere between 300000 and a million dollars is pretty standard. Um, so you want to look for that on your policy. It can go down to 100000 but again, it's one of the cheapest parts of your premium. So from going from 100000 to 300000 it might be like five bucks a year to change that. And I yeah. think for I, I noticed that when I took out my homeowner's insurance that the liability insurance on it was like 300000 and I was amazed at how cheap it was to increase it to a million dollars. It was very little. Uh, so one thing you want to keep in mind is if you're getting homeowner's insurance, the things you want to look at is, okay, what is the liability coverage? And if it's only $300,000, and I hate to say this, but in a lawsuit or in certain medical circumstances, that may not go very far. Yeah. Uh, you, you probably would want to, 500000 at least? Yes, especially if you have a lot of kids. I mean, you got, you never know what your kids are going to do, right? Sure. And they're <laughs> covered up to what age? As long as they're living in the household. So if Okay, so my 24-year-old daughter, correct. if she's living in the house and she does something that she's found liable for, she's covered Correct. under my homeowner's insurance Correct. policy. So we have a lot of you know mixed match families where parents are living with their kids and grandparents are living with their parents, you know, things like that. So it covers it, the named insured, everybody that's living in the house. All right, so the coverage amount for the liability isn't tied just to the homeowner, it's anybody that resides in Correct. the house. Right. All family members, grandparents, children, yep, anybody as... like that as long as they reside in the house. Yeah. And there's no age restriction. Correct. All right. So my daughter, when she's 30 years old, if she's still living at home, she still has liability coverage under my homeowner's Correct. insurance. Correct. All right. What are the, are there any of the most common claims for liability that you typically no, see? So there's, there's another part to your homeowner's insurance, which is medical payments. Um, so you have your liability, which means you're liable for something. Sure. Okay. You also usually have, and most homeowners policies have like five to ten to twenty thousand dollars of medical payments on your policy. And what medical payments is different from liability is medical payments is going to pay regardless of who's at fault. Hypothetically, let's just say you have your sister over and she's just walking and trips in the lawn and breaks her ankle. You really didn't do anything wrong. She's just kind of a clumsy and she, and she breaks her ankle. She might not have very good health insurance or a high deductible on her health insurance. We'll pay up to that ten, twenty thousand for medical payments just because it happened on your property. So it seems like we have more medical payment claims than liability claims. All right. And what is, is there? What is a standard coverage on the medical for yeah, a dollar usually amount? Usually for a oh, dollar amount, yeah, like premium. Is, yeah. Now, again, it's very, very minimal. Okay. Uh, and so. what is the coverage amount? Did you say it was ten thousand? Well, it depends. Or? Anywhere from five to twenty, twenty-five. Just depends. All right. And, and the standard's probably about ten. All right. But you could increase that. That is correct. Is that right? And so if you want, you're saying, you know, that doesn't cover very much in this day and age. I'd like to cover, you know, 20 or 25 or $30,000 in medical. Uh, you could request that. It'd cause a small increase in your premium, but you have much better coverage. Correct. All right. And, and, and so, just real quick, back to liability. One other thing that is part of your liability is most people live in subdivisions now and pay a homeowner's association premium. And a homeowner's association usually has a liability policy that covers the subdivision. Um, so what happens is it's usually like a million dollars, but if for something happens in the homeowner association, like if you have a pool, um, tennis courts, basketball courts, and some kid gets hurt, they're going to sue the homeowner association. If, if that million dollar policy maxes out or whatever the premium is on the homeowner association, the homeowners are responsible for the additional amount increased on that. So your homeowner's liability would increase up to, up to that 300000 if you had it to take care of any homeowner association claims. Okay. Um, is there any other things that, that come to mind that when people are shopping either for insurance or the different coverages uh, that they need to know when they're looking for homeowner's insurance that's important from a coverage perspective? Well, I usually, uh, your homeowner's or premium or insurance covers basically anything accidental and sudden. So obviously, you know, fire, theft, vandalism, um, things like that, all that's covered on there. There are three things. Accidental and sudden. Accidental and Th sudden. Those are the, the key that's things the that you need to know from an insurance coverage perspective Correct. that normally will be covered except for, you well, said so there like three accidental things. And sudden, you know, accidental and sudden is kind of a funny thing because if you know that your bathtub's leaking into the subfloor and you don't do anything about it, 
for five years and all of a sudden you go step in your bathroom and you go through the floor with your foot. That's been going on for five years. That's not accidental and sudden. So, so that won't be covered. That wouldn't be covered. All right, because so, it was basically neglected. Correct. It wasn't uh, taken care of. Correct. All so right. you just, anything accidental and sudden. So like, even if you like chipped your counter sink, it was accidental and sudden, that's covered. I mean, obviously that might not affect your deductible, but anything accidental and sudden. All right. covered. And then you said there was three things that typically were not covered. Yeah, three things that are typically not covered under homeowner's policy is flood. And flood is, is natural ground seepage. Um, if it rains and rains and rains, or if, uh, for some reason if a canal overflowed, or if it snowed a lot and then melted, if it flooded into your crawl space, that wouldn't be covered. All right, so things like floods, uh, basements that flood, uh, now, obviously, if those you, kind of things, normal, right. you know, then you have Irrigation to go and get... Irrigation breaks and floods, that's covered. Right, but normal, otherwise you have to go and get flood insurance. Right, and that's and, through FEMA. That's, right. Everybody goes through FEMA to get that. Earthquakes, then, real quick, is another thing that you can not get. You covered. can have that endorsement. Right. But you don't have too many around here, but right. you okay. never know. And then what was the third? Um, septic backup. So if you're out septic of the city backup. limits and you have a, a septic tank and it overflows and you're and it sinks your ground or backs right. up into your house, that's not covered, but you can get an endorsement to add that to. All right, and so in, um, in summary, homeowner's insurance is something that everyone does typically have, and yes. a lender is especially gonna have because it's how their, quote, collateral is insured in case there's a fire or something like that happens. And so homeowner's insurance is a very important part of the process. Uh, however, it's also relatively cheap. It's one of the, the cheaper... Uh, to cover one of your most expensive assets, it's relatively you cheap. You know, when you're thinking normal premiums I see are three to $500 a year, 30 to $40 a month, you know, compared to the rest of the payment, it's actually a fair, fairly small expense, but also uh, coverage you have to have and coverage that you want to have. It's probably the best insurance out there as far as the most bang for your buck. Would you agree? That is correct. I would uh, say right. that. Monty, uh, I appreciate you coming today and, and helping me. explain uh, how homeowners insurance works. We're